Greetings. I'd like to let you in on a little secret. I'd like to share a little secret with you, right? As soon as we start thinking about spreading the word, which is the term we're using for business development or marketing, as soon as we start thinking about marketing, we start thinking big. So everybody encourages us to do those people who sell marketing stuff come around and they tell us to think big. Will that scale? What, what are the numbers? Like what's the possible audience? How big could we be? Like how many people on Twitter, how many, like, et cetera, et cetera, big, big, big. It's always about big. How big can we get? And here's the secret. The secret when it comes to spreading the word about the work of a real financial advisor, the secret is small. The secret is to focus on small. Seth Godin talks about this as a minimum viable audience, right? To start, and, and there's some amazing things that happen to you when you start viewing the world through that lens, when we start thinking small, right? Um, and let me walk you through a couple. The first thing that starts happening is we start to realize like we're not talking to the average person. We're not even talking to the average retired person in our town, right? We're not even talking to the average retired physician in our town. We're talking to something else, right? And I'm going to walk you through another example here in a minute. So the idea of average goes away, which is really, really important because in today, right, like average doesn't exist. Back in the days when the main form of marketing were TV commercials and billboards, right? Like maybe you could speak to the average person, but now average doesn't exist. There's 5,000 television channels, right? You know what I mean? The average doesn't exist. So you start to view, when, when you start to think get small, the secret is small, in spreading the word, we start to realize, wait, we're not talking the average. The second thing that happens is we start now, I, I, I'm going to make a claim here. And I'm hoping this claim will knock you a little off center, right? That's my goal. The claim is no one cares about your amazing solutions. No one cares about the beautiful portfolios you build. No one cares about the amazing financial plans. Like no one cares about your solutions. No one cares about your solutions. They care about their problems, right? Now, if you understand, now I realize, I almost want to repeat it again, but I'm not going to. I realize like we're in the solutions business. So I'm hoping that I'm just begging you to allow that to simmer a little bit as a mindset, just to start. If you, Here's the way to think about it. If you believe that, how would things be different, right? If, if those were the lenses you were viewing your marketing activities through, how would you do things different? And so when you combine this idea of getting small and, and being focused on people's problems, you get some amazingly powerful things. And so let me just walk you through an example. Um, here, yeah, this is my favorite example. It's a, uh, a member of the society, an advisor that we've known for a long time, has been through a bunch of my training programs. Um, he focuses on, I'm gonna start really broadly, focuses on technology executives. And you hear people say that a lot, right? Like that's my niche or my niche, <laughs> as my friends in the UK taught me in Australia, right? My niche um, is technology executives. Okay, that, 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 that's a start, right? Like it's, it's, it's not this big, it's this big, right? Technology executives. Now our friend focuses on technology executives, but that's not all, right? He focuses on technology executives at one single company. He happens to live in the hometown of the company one single company. Now, immediately, can you already, I hope you understand the power of this, immediately, we, we've still got some one, at least one more step to go, right? But immediately, you're like, wait a second. If I'm working with technology executives of that single company, I probably, I could understand their, um, their benefits better, certainly better than they understand them, and maybe even better, and I've heard this from this advisor, right? He understands the benefits package, the benefit package at that company better than almost any single individual even in HR, right? Like HR collectively may understand it better, but any single individual in HR, he understands the benefit package better than them. And he certainly understands it better than the executives that he, give, he advises, right? Now, one step further, 
technology executives who work at a specific single company that I'm not naming, right? Like a specific company that are of Indian nationality. Now, my friend is not Indian, but he had one of the clients. And he realized, like, well, these guys have some guys and girls have some really interesting challenges to face. If I could understand. So he, he, he focused on this. It became the smallest viable audience for him. Now, there's massive power because now you understand their problems. You almost understand their problems before they even tell you. And they start saying all sorts of interesting things happen. They start saying things like, how did you know? Let me give you another example. I built, I had a business like, okay, everybody who lives in Utah and likes to mountain bike. Right? Like, that's, a, that's a pretty big board. And then, I, and then I realized like, oh, I was doing some work with some really interesting doctors. I, I, I rode my bike and backcountry skied with some people who were physicians. Interesting, right? So I was like, okay, I work with physicians in Utah who like to spend time outside. Okay, cool. We're here. Then I started realizing, well, wait, I... I, I, I've gathered a group of emergency room doctors. I, I often joke that like the activities we're engaged in together, you know, rock climbing and mountain biking and, and, and playing outside, it's always helpful to have an emergency room doctor around. But I, I ended up with a couple of emergency room doctors as clients and realized like, oh, I really like them. They have some unique challenges. And I won't go into all the challenges, but they have some unique challenges of being an emergency room doctor. One of them is that they did shift work. In the States, they didn't have any plant and equipment. They would just show up. They, they, often they referred to themselves as lunchbox doctors, right? They'd show up with their lunchbox, do their shift, and go home. Now, it turns out there's one or two other specialties like that. So I ended up here with just working with those three specialties because they shared one common problem. And what was so fascinating is I, I, you know, we ended up, we, we could write about it. It gave me something to blog about. It gave me something like, it gave, I could write a book about it. I could write white papers about it. Like all of those things. But the, the benefit of that was I, I could say something like, oh yeah, you must feel this or do this or do this. And they would say, how did you know? Well, I knew because I was focused on the minimum viable audience, right? The smallest audience I could serve. And because of that, I became, now, I've heard it said in our industry that if you want to become an expert, just raise your hand. No, not here, not at the Society of Real Finance. Real financial advisors, if they decide to be experts in an area, are actually experts. And the way they become actual experts is by digging in and understanding the problems and doing the reps, right? Like sitting with people and understanding the problems. My friend who works with executives at that specific company of Indian, Indian nationality understands their problems better than anybody else on the planet, I can guarantee you, right? And I felt like I understood those three specialties specifically because they, had, they shared some specific challenges better than anybody else. Now, what happens when you do that, right? Seth points this out when he wrote about minimum viable audience. The fascinating thing about when you focus here, right? You feel like you're saying, you feel like, and you are really, right? You feel like you're saying no, no, no. And then there's this giant yes out here, right? And when you're saying no, that feels like I'm saying no, no, no to new business. So it always feels like a no. And it turns out the bigger yes is far more important. Two things happen. Seth points this out, right? Two things happen. One, you find out there's way more of them than you thought. And number two, they talk to each other. And that, my friends, I think is the key, the secret to spreading the word. Focus on the smallest possible audience and become a real expert. The secret to spreading the word is get small. Greetings, Carl Richards here. The clip you just watched was from The Fellowship. In fact, it was from one of the 21 declarations of a real financial advisor. Now, the fellowship is one of my favorite projects that I've ever worked on. It was my attempt really to put a stake in the ground, a manifesto, if you will, of what it means to be a real financial advisor. Now, I've got to be clear, this isn't a list of tips or tricks or tactics or shortcuts. I've actually found that the tactics are quite easy. 
if you have the confidence to do the work. And the fellowship is about giving you the confidence to do the work. It's a reminder of the massive value that you provide to the people that you serve. So I think you would absolutely love it. To learn more and to get instant access if you sign up, just click the link and I'll see you on the inside, my friends.